You have been cautious on Apple. Is now a time to buy the shares after the lassitude that we've seen over the last 12 months? Uh, I, I would have liked to say yes, Tom. Um, but unfortunately, uh, and, and the reason why I would have liked to say yes is because sentiment is very, very low uh, on the name. You know, 60% buy ratings and 40% sell and uh, a neutral rating for that name, it's very, very, um, um, it's as low um, as can be, I would say. So we've had like a very slow year, um, you know, three quarters in a row um, uh, in negative growth. We're getting back to positive growth probably on the guide, but it's just because we're hitting like the, the easier compare now. Um, and so that slowdown, like the stock reacted relatively well to that slowdown. If you look at the Apple stock, it roughly tracked you right. know, the, um, um, uh, the Nasdaq. So not much happened uh, on the stock. And the reason why, you know, I wouldn't jump on board now is first, not, not a significant pullback. So valuation, you, you're still paying like a hefty premium for right. Apple. It's, it, it's, partly, it's partly justified, of course, for the quality of the franchise. But you know what happens next that really creates a surprise and gets the stock to work right. from here. The heart it's of the kind matter, of an empty list. The heart of the matter, Pierre, is single digit revenue growth. So I went back to the pandemic and basically sales are up forty seven percent from two thousand nineteen. Yes. But the free cash flow generation off that is up seventy one percent. In your caution, are you suggesting that that formula they have of operating leverage, of generating EBITDA, of generating free cash flow is now broken given single digit revenue growth? No, I think it, it still works, but you know, of five of five percent uh, revenue growth, you don't uh, you don't generate as much free cash flow growth. So, the way I like to think about it is out of like. You know, between three and five percent revenue growth, Apple can generate. You know, um, you know, above five percent, like six, seven percent earnings, dividend, free cash flow growth on a sustainable basis uh, through like systematic buyback, through operating leverage, etc. So there is definitely a huge uh, amount of quality there and a very strong balance sheet, as you just mentioned. So all that is worth a premium when you look at Apple today. Uh, it's trading on 27 times, you know, uh, forward um, forward earnings. Uh, Standard and Poor's names who, who grow between five and 10 percent per annum, their, their overall economics are trading on like 22 times. So you have a significant premium. So you won't have like a valuation surprise out of this very healthy, very high quality model. And so. When you own the stock today, you have to to believe this premium is going to remain, which which I think is fine. Mm -hmm. But but you can't expect like uh, a sudden jump and a sudden increase uh, in valuation multiple unless you have a new growth story, and that's that's where it's kind of difficult to to, to expect that to come. Right. Through. The China part of the equation is not a growth story for Apple right now. Huawei's Mate 60 Pro uh, getting a lot of attention, kind of stealing the thunder in many ways. And Apple bears will always point to the China demand uh, for iPhone 15 as a reason to, to not be optimistic. How does Tim Cook frame the negative headlines that are hitting Apple out of China, whether it's the Mate 60 Pro or whether it's Beijing's ban of using foreign phones for government workers or at state-owned enterprises? Yeah, so I think it's a very good question. It, it's, it's a source of concern. Interestingly, I don't think it's going to materialize that quickly mm. um, because like the new Huawei phone is, uh, is really uh, like in, uh, in early innings, uh, you know, they probably don't have a strong case to be that competitive against the iPhone. But it's true that, you know, in this jump you mentioned um, since 2020, um, uh, le, term, a lot of that, was like what we're getting out of the picture in uh, in China, and Apple really like gaining about 20 million extra units, uh, iPhone units, combined with a, an increase in ASP. And so that part of the business, I think, is true, is kind of at risk over the next couple of years, um, because China China might be able to pull together an alternative to um, uh, to the iPhone. The iPhone remains like an exceptional product. You know, this is the only phone at a three nanometer. Manufacturing a node for for the main chip, uh, exceptional quality, exceptional like integrated software and uh, and hardware, etc. So, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say the Chinese are going to put out a phone that can compete with the iPhone, but we know that in the past about 20 million phones were selling at Huawei, 
And when Huawei disappeared, that market seemed to have moved straight into uh, Apple's hands. I see. Um, and that's, um, that, that's a concern, of course. So how about Apple and AI? I mean, Apple was kind of left behind when ChatGPT and all the other AI tools, you know, took over the zeitgeist. Um, I know Apple's working on things with relation, relative to Siri and how it can incorporate more generative AI into its products. Is this something that has reached a point where investors can, can model it? No, so I think le, on the business model of uh, of Apple, you know, who is uh, making uh, all its uh, profits from selling hardware and then uh, selling like a, a mostly uh, subscription services of, over this hardware, um, like you know, the kind of like magical um, uh, um, uh, one trick where you can charge like thirty dollars a month for a, a generative AI based services that does, doesn't really exist. The way I see it is that for Apple, generative AI is going to be more of a defensive move. Uh, Siri has never been exceptionally impressive uh, in terms of uh, what it can achieve uh, in terms of voice recognition and uh, uh, user uh, user right. service. Apple is going to continue to 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 do their best to 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 enhance the overall user experience with generative AI. But I don't see that as like a, as a, as a oh. revenue enhancement for them as it could be for like a Microsoft or Google and, and, and Meta on advertising and things like Pierre, that. Pierre, do you, just to, to finish here, is Apple such a dynamo, like you were mugged by your kids to go in and buy more toys, like Bramo, like Foo, like Keen, I mean, we're all in the same game. Are you suggesting that this is a stock that treads water for five years, or are you actually looking for a diminished share price? So, um, that's, I think, from from here over the next five years, I think that's a stock that can compound with its earnings power or its dividend power. So, you know, it can compound like in single digits, maybe high single digits. So it's not it's not too bad for a very high quality name. Um, and then I would look at buying it only if there is a bit of a dislocation at some point, like a loss in confidence, if you know right. this quality perceived that Apple wasn't there all the time. And so if you see like a uh, a weakness coming out of China or things like that, and if the stock is hurt by that, I think I would be I would be very keen to to revisit and look at you know getting into the name at a at a more attractive valuation because when you're talking compounding, then valuation is almost everything because that's that's what drives you know your ability to buy back your stock more right. efficiently uh, and things like that. Right. So I really think you need a lower multiple to make Apple a, comp uh, a compelling like you know single digit compounding opportunity. Um, and then a kind of like a breakthrough opportunity, you know, an opportunity to increase prices, to increase significantly volume, to launch a new product. Difficult to see that on the horizon, right. to be honest.